All right, if you're watching this video, you are a FreshBooks user. There is no way that someone who is not already using FreshBooks is watching this moderately obscure video about a very minor part of bookkeeping on FreshBooks. So I'm glad that you are here. You are in the best place to get your questions answered about FreshBooks. What this particular video is about is how to handle it when you make a business purchase. So an expense for you. And then you have to get a refund for that purchase, for that expense. It could be for anything. Maybe it's a software subscription that you tried and you didn't like. Maybe you go to Home Depot and you buy something and need to return it. That's the kind of refund I'm talking about, not refunds that you give to your clients. So if you have your bank connected to FreshBooks, and you should, then the way that FreshBooks built their software is that you record a refund via the bank reconciliation. All right, I'm here in the demo account. You have to go to accounting and select your bank, and then you would select the transaction. This one in the demo account is not a refund, but let's say it was, then you'd go here to this green button and you'd select expense refund. That is how it was designed, but I'm here to tell you that under no circumstances should you ever use that feature, this button right here. We have to hack it because there are two major problems we have to solve with the way FreshBooks built this refund feature. I've known about the first one for a little while now, but last week I found out about a second one and I feel obligated to tell you how to handle this because it's a big deal. So I'm going to show you the problems quickly and then I'm going to show you how, uh, show you a hack to fix it. Let's dive in. So let's call this first problem a quirk. It's here in the project section. Quirk is sort of a soft label. Um, I didn't rush to make a video when I found out about this because it may be not so bad, I thought. The problem is that using the refund feature in Fre FreshBooks ruins all your project profitability and expense reports. And one of the things that makes FreshBooks stand out is, and, and, and is helpful about FreshBooks is the project's feature. But let's go back here to the bank reconciliation screen if we were to do this, see the problem is the coders, when you put expense refund, there's nothing here to also select the project that that refund should be associated with. So what happens is they smash together all the refund figures at the bottom of every single project expense report. So the project report that you took so much time to track your expenses to is pretty useless without a lot of additional manual calculations. Let me just show you an example here. All right, I'm in a new file. I went to projects and I'm going to open a project. Inside of this project, I'm going to go to reports and click on expense report. Now this is supposed to be where the main juice is. So we have an expense report that is filtered by project. Yet when I scroll down at the bottom of this project report, there are four transactions that were expense refunds. And these transactions don't have anything to do with this project, or, or maybe they do. Uh, they could have something to do with the project. They could have something to do with a different project, or they could just be general business overhead, like if you got a refund from your insurance company or something. But they're put at the bottom of all of these reports. And so this total expenses number back at the top is wrong for this project. It is net of the entire refund amount for the whole company. So where I'm from, we would describe this as no bueno, not good. But in the last week, I learned that that refund button actually gets worse. It does more than just ruin your profit pro profitability reports. It ruins the entire profit and loss statement for your entire business. Your profit and loss statement does not have a mathematically correct answer as soon as you use the refund feature in the bank rec screen even one time. It wrecks what is arguably the most important report that a FreshBooks user needs to both manage their business and successfully file taxes. I mean, the profit and loss report is important. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So here is a profit and loss statement that contains a refund. In this example, this user has had one single refund, but that one refund just made the whole math of this sheet incorrect. I'll highlight the numbers, but I realize this is super tiny, so just take my word for it. But when you take her revenue up here and subtract out all the expenses that are shown below, you do not end up with the total number at the very bottom of this report. You know, in accounting, we, we kind of like 10 minus 3 to equal 7. But once you use the refund feature, your profit and loss report basically tells you 10 minus 3 equals 8. Uh, for this particular company, she had a single refund of $119.88. But the FreshBooks add the ref adds the refund back only at the very bottom line. It just smushes that refund into this number way down here with no signal that that's what it is doing. It's not called 
you know, net income with the refunds added back, or there's no asterisks up here to show that it's a refund number, that, 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 that the math is not this number minus these categories equals this. And there's, there's no clue as to what expense category that refund was supposed to go to. And you need to know your actual total for your expense categories to fill out the boxes of your tax return. It's only because I went in and studied her transactions that I know that this refund was in January in the software category, way over here, and that is overstated by $119.88. It says $280.28, and that's overstated by $119.88. So if you print off your profit and loss report and you give it to a tax preparer where all of the components of the profit and loss statement don't accurately sum to the net income number, what do you think is going to happen? You think you're going to get an email saying that your financial statements are incorrect and you're going to get moved to the bottom of their stack? Yes. Yes, you will. Or if you're trying to file your own taxes and you use these numbers and you were using the expense section here in FreshBooks to populate your Schedule C and things aren't adding up right, do you think you're going to pull your hair out? Yes. And when a refund is small, like 119 bucks for this client, it kind of gets hidden. But what if you had a big refund? What if maybe you got $5,000 back, maybe from a contract agreement that went south? Every time you run your profit and loss statement, it is still going to show that big fat $5,000 number up here in the expense section. Isn't that going to be confusing to constantly have to net it out in your own mind to tell the proper story of your business expenses? All right, whining is unattractive, so let's solve the problem. <laughs> yes, it's bad and it needs to be fixed, but you're neck deep in FreshBooks already, so I'm just going to tell you how to fix this. And I know that you as a FreshBooks customer and me as a FreshBooks accounting partner are counting on FreshBooks to take all that unicorn money that they recently got and fix these problems. They know that this is a problem and I'm trusting that they're going to fix it. So the first step is we have to identify anything that you marked as a refund. The way to do that is to be here in the report section and you're going to go to your expense report, run it for the dates that you want. We'll do it for this year in this case. And it's going to be at the very bottom of this report. Way down here, so for this client, there's just one refund, but if there were a lot, it would, it, they would all be down here. You're going to want to capture the date and the exact amount so it's easier to search for the exact expense. And that's the next step. The next step is to go over here to the Expenses tab, and you're going to search for your specific transaction. So probably the best way is to search by the exact dollar amount, uh, you can also use, you know, scroll through till you get to the date and then identify it. And then you need to know your refund amount. So in this instance, she received a full refund. But if you need to confirm that, you can go to your bank statement or you can go to the bank reconciliation screen because that bank reconciliation screen has all of your transactions, the money out and the money in and refund is money in. And so you're going to see it as one of the inflows on the left side of your bank rec screen. So I don't have that up right now. I know for this particular expense, it is a full refund. So I'm going to edit this to zero dollars. If it was less than, then you'd get out your little calculator. You'd find that net amount. You know, maybe they kept like a $10 processing fee. So your expense for that particular transaction, you would make it $10 in that instance. But whatever the case, you're going to change the expense to your net amount and they let you put a zero there. Now the final step is going to be to reconcile this. So we're going to accounting, and because we changed a previously reconciled transaction, it automatically unreconciles it. However, this client was on the ball, she's up to date on her books, so we actually have to go and unreconcile that refund. I'm going to go do that right now. So I found the transaction. You can see she had used the built-in FreshBooks feature, which is not going to work. So we need to go and reconcile that. I'm going to check that box, go to the top, click Unmatch, go back to Unmatched. We actually have two transactions now, negative and positive for the same number. Negative and positive of the same number equals zero. So we clicked two over here. We can click one here, and now we are able to match it. So what this little hack does is it makes your project profitability reports accurate and, and have them be, those reports be useful. And even more importantly, it makes that basic math on your profit and loss statement correct. All right, so what did we learn? We learned the two places where this bug in the code shows up, and I hope it puts sufficient gravity on your shoulders about this unique bookkeeping situation so that you won't 
go be bopping along thinking that this is not a big deal for your bookkeeping. You can't think, oh, my expense refunds are so small and rare, so I'll just use the refund feature. It's good enough. No, it's not good enough. Fake news. Even if you're not using project tracking reports, you can't use your profit and loss report. So you have to do your refunds this way that I just taught. Now I'm going to close by saying every single software that has ever been built has had little unique features like this. And so there's no way that running a single business and having exposure to one bookkeeping software, like many of you listeners are going to be, um, you're not going to know how to do all these little things. You already know this in so many other parts of your business. You know, it's like 80% of something is kind of easy and it's that last 20% that you would have never expected that can just derail things. Who knew something as simple as going to Home Depot and getting a refund could wreck your entire bookkeeping on this software that otherwise serves you really well. But they are aware of this. They know it needs to be fixed, and so stay encouraged. Um, and anyway, it's my job to figure all of this stuff out for you and walk beside you as you are taking those brave steps to build a business and to build a wonderful life for you and your family. So stay in touch. Subscribe to this channel. Ask me questions below. Download my weekly checklist for bookkeeping tasks. That'll be a huge help for you. You can find that below. You can watch my five ways your fresh books is wrong video to see if you are handling the some of the main trouble spots correctly. You can find that link below too. And lastly, consider coming to my office hours. We talk about these little things all the time and light bulbs go off for people all the time. I promise you will save so much time and energy wrestling with your bookkeeping software by yourself when I can be like that lighthouse that you can always look to that's looking out for all the potential trouble spots as you grow your business. So stay in touch. I'm Kate Josephine Johnson, and I help businesses build their business legacy.